Saint Benedict and Saint Scholastica. On the north wall, in almost life-size figures, our saints in tone color are seen holding their famous altercation. Parga tibi omnipotens Deus soror, quides quod feisti, ego te rogave et odiri mi no luisti, rogave domino meum et audivat me. May Almighty God spare you, sister. What is this that you have done? I asked you, and you would not listen. I asked my Lord, and he heard me. Saint Benedict shows consternation in his rugged face, while Saint Scholastica shows all the repose of heaven on her countenance in strange contrast to the raging storm outside. The companion of Saint Benedict and the sister who is at the side of Saint Scholastica live through the natural experience of awe, aroused by the violent wind and thunder and lightning and pouring rain that are seen through the window. The other things seen in the painting are symbolic of the holy meeting, which brought twin brother and sister together once a year. High above the window, in the arched space, hangs a crucifix pe peculiar to the Maria Locke School of Art. Christ is represented before the cross in the regal garments of his royal kingship. Below, immediately above the table, as if presiding in their midst, is the dove, symbol of the Holy Spirit. On the table is the hourglass with wings attached on both sides. It is not hard to guess at the hidden meaning of the flight of time when love of God is the subject of holy conversation. The table is of the console type where a fancy figure forms the standard supporting the slab. This figure is a peacock with spread wings symbolic of immortality. At St. Benedict's feet rests the raven, and opposite at the feet of St. Scholastica is the dove. Both birds are well known to all who are versed in Benedictan lore. At one time, the man of God, St. Benedict, escaped the vindictiveness of an enemy who had schemed to kill him by sending a poisoned loaf of bread to the saint. Straight away, a raven came and carried the loaf away. The dove was to be a messenger of death three days after the events of the scene painted on the wall. After having prolonged their conversation through the night, St. Benedict departed for his monastery, and St. Scholastica, with the premonition that this was their last meeting, left for her convent. The dove, which her brother saw issuing from the convent, told him that his sister Scholastica's soul had taken flight into the realms of glory, whither he himself was to follow forty days later the burial of St. Scholastica. Following the intention of the dove's flight into heaven, St. Benedict sent several monks to the convent with instructions to bring the body of his saintly sister to the monastery for burial. The mural in the small space to the left of the sacristy door and below the scene of their last meeting shows the bier on which lies the body of St. Scholastica, composed in the sleep of death. St. Benedict, holding the book of the burial ritual, is seen in company with the choir monks. The lay brothers at each end are distinguished from the choir monks by the absence of the kukula, the large, full mantle which all choir monks wore at solemn functions. The burning tapers at the foot of the bier complete the picture of the burial. All the figures are characterized by absolute composure, by reverence, 
and by countenances expressing resignation to God's most holy and adorable will. Under this mural are the words, Veni Sponsa Christi, Acipe Coranum Quam Tibi, Dominus Preparavit in Eternum. Come, spouse of Christ, accept the crown which the Lord has prepared for you from all eternity. <laughs>